how, how do you think about the, I guess, the future of coding, right? Because it feels to me now, you know, maybe new students or junior software engineers, they can rely on those tools that produces all of the code. So how can you assess that somebody has learned coding, uh, has learned the fundamentals and, and understand what's pitted out? Because often what's pitted out is often correct. So where do you stand on this kind of like dilemma between, you know, the field of writing code seems to get more and more automated, uh, but at the same time as an educational institute, we have a duty to assess, you know, people's knowledge and skills and, and help them learn the right things, right? So it's a bit of a philosophical debate here, Ali, but I'd love to hear your perspective, uh, you know, comparing from 10 years ago to today, I guess. Yeah, so I think 20 years ago to today, when it, when like 20 years ago, we were not doing very much teaching of, we're doing a lot of teaching of how to program with QE2 in terms of the traditional, I sit there and type out my Java or Python or Prolog or Fortran program. Uh, and as you say, the, the tools are quite basic in terms of uh, manipulating of that program. But we were not doing so much in terms of teaching the other way of programming a computer, which we now know, which is data-driven, right? So we haven't just got, um, you know, the generative AI models, but we've got lots of other machine learning models that we can and do use to program our computer. And so I think we do need to make sure that both at school level and at universities, we teach the traditional programming model and also the data-driven programming model. Now, within the programming space uh, of writing out your code, as you say, now there are also ways in which computers can assist student in, students in that activity. Um, and this reminds me a bit of the analogy with why do we still teach primary school kids how to multiply and divide and conduct arithmetic, right, with pencil and paper? And that's because we want to train their brain to understand those fundamental areas of mathematics. And so I think by analogy, there's a space in education for teaching people programming um, and making sure that they can do the basics. Even though, you know, we can give a primary school kid a calculation, they can use it, we still value that. And we think education is important and they can do those operations themselves. But then at some point we shift gears in education, right? By the time we get to sixth forms in universities, many exams allow calculators. And by analogy, I think, you know, we can, there's a space for assessments to also include the use of those tools as well. And so we need to do, I think, some assessment that looks at the fundamentals, some assessment which you might say, because many of our graduate students do go into industry and industry careers, is more representative of the work that they're going to go to in the end. Um, and we have to be cognizant, of course, of that worry that you've just expressed of, do our students, you know, how do, they, how do we make sure they've really demonstrated they're understood what has been produced in an interaction with an LM other than it looks about right. That's super interesting because it sounds like, you know, if we use the maths and calculator example, there's a bit of a tension between we want to teach you maths on pen and paper because it teaches you about problem solving or it's a very structured way of learning. But at the same time, if you just want the answer, the calculator is the best way to do it. The tool will give you the right answer faster. So it's kind of like a tension between teaching maybe more repurposable learning mindset and skills versus getting the answer. And we're seeing the same in coding, perhaps. Uh, are, you, are you suggesting that through learning uh, coding, we've had computer assisted tools, you're learning sort of maybe meta level type of concepts that might transfer in your career, critical thinking, well, problem solving, so which are harder to do? So I, I guess if we go back to the, the calculator example, I think there's another thing that by teaching the arithmetic uh, that happens, and which is other checks of whether you've got it right. So it's very easy the calculator to miss out a decimal point or to switch two numbers or not, not actually press a key for a number. And so um, we hope that, you know, whilst using a calculator, students will also go, is that a big number? Is that about the right number that I should be expecting? And the same thing I think is true for coding, where right? you, you have you have this interaction with a, 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 a co-pilot or other LLM technology, um, but what comes out, you need to be able to critically evaluate it. Uh, and also to a certain extent, I, I did spend a little time with co-pilot, now admittedly some time ago, asking it um, to do some security code, right? 
Uh, and one of the things I put in was uh, uh, hashing passwords, which is a common thing that we uh, need to make sure works properly for uh, systems that do use user authentication. And if you ask it you know, to complete hash underscore password in Python, uh, um, it produced, at the time at least, quite a poor answer, one that was not using uh, good algorithms and, and so on. Whereas if you put in a hash underscore password PDPKF2, right, specifying the algorithm that you wanted, you got a much higher quality answer. So if we're not teaching our students the fundamentals, they might not ask the right questions but get the right answers. Great. Great. So teaching the fundamentals like like things like arithmetic or coding teach you skills that are really helpful for I guess verification, challenging, uh, criticizing the output that might be produced from a, you know, Gen AI or an automated algorithm. So that those are still valuable and um, those are transferable across perhaps other disciplines. So maybe that's yeah. the win. So there's still a yeah, place to learn how to code. I think so. And I think um, yeah, this question of, are you asking the right question? Right, because uh, it's also fundamental um, because if you don't ask the right question or you don't convey that clearly, you're not going to get an answer that's meaningful to you. Yeah.